Welcome, everybody, to the Nerd Cave News. I am one of your hosts, Zach Dykes, and I'm joined along with is tall and tan and young and lovely. The girl from Ipanema goes walking, and when she passes, each one she passes goes, ah, Mercedes Oak Garcia. Mercedes Oak Garcia. <sighs> Lukewarm to me. So I, I, I don't know if there's some hidden thing. Like, I like the little intro song. It's not, it's some nice like, little yeah. vibing, like elevator music. But I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's not it's not definitely not bad. Don't get me wrong. Definitely not bad. But definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Not up there. OK. OK. Well, that's so. That's but Trey's fault. I can roll then. with it for tonight. <laughs> Murdoch said, "Not feeling it." <laughs> maybe there's some hidden meat. Maybe Trey has some hidden meaning behind it that I don't get. So I apologize, Trey, if if I I, I don't, don't get I, the reason I picked it is because of the song because that's actually a song. The girl from Ipanema is like one of my favorite songs. So that's oh. the reason I picked it. Other than that, got you. I you know. That's I just wanted to sing on stream. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, no. And I'll Thank say you. you have those beautiful tones. So uh, as you should after spending how many yeah, years one in, or two. in the music one or two. program at Troy. <laughs> yeah. Guys, yeah. <laughs> you can become part of the ship. Part of the crew, the exclusive crew, that is, by going over to patreon.com, uh, just like our wonderful crew members, Brandon Hicks, Richard Newell, Daniel Sanford, Rushing Water Yoga, The Conductor, Marilyn James, Martin Sager, and Brittany, the Granny B. Harrison. Derek, where can they find the Nerd Cave News? Where, you might ask? Well, it is quite simple. You can find us on a, the Nerd Cave News on a variety of platforms such as Twitch, YouTube, and TikTok. Watch us live each and every week for our pre- and post-show shenanigans, or go over to YouTube to watch the replay of the show. If you if you like bite-sized nuggets of gaming news, check us out on TikTok. Search Nerd Cave Network on any Boom. platform, and you will find us. I threw I threw Derek for a loop because I normally let Derek do the Patreon. Do the Patreon, yeah. I was say, I was like, all right, so he's doing it this week, and then you thought, like, oh, oh, wasn't ready for this one, guys. <laughs> during the month of June and July for Game Club, we're doing Horizon Zero Dawn, the complete edition. You still have time to get through Horizon Zero Dawn mm -hmm. if you just yes, you can and still we be a have part of the conversation. Not one, but two channels over on our Discord talking about Game Club, where you can share share your share your clips. Share spoilers if you want to get into spoiler territory and everything. And once we finish Horizon Zero Dawn, we're going to do kind of a big like discussion on it and you know bring in people and just have the community talk about the game and everything. That's the thing that I'm looking forward to is getting a a time to talk with everyone that's been playing the game, their experiences, the you know, their their best moments, you know, what stuck out to them. Cause I always loved doing that in high school, you know, and in college, me and Derek would constantly talk about video yeah. games. So, you know, that's. Oh, yeah. You know, when we should be doing like music history homework, you know, we uh, <laughs> we did discuss video games. But it's OK because we, we got we the did. work done regardless. And I slept. I slept. Many times and. If, if, the love of your life said. Uh, if Derek would channel his inner Spanish, it would Chiquita, land. I think yeah, I would land. I think it, I think it would. I land. think Derek could. <laughs> he wears a crop top polo, guys, and he's got tassels. Yeah, you got one no, one tassel, one. but you have tassel. an assortment of tassels to go with your various crop top polos. <laughs> okay, he does. I do. So yes. got one in every color of the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> Man, we've got a bunch of get I didn't notice all these links. Okay. Well, let's get into the gaming discussion this week, guys. Yeah. Make sure while we're doing the show, chat with us. If you're watching the replay, let us know what you thought down in the comments below. I think we need Coco Cocoa Cabana. 
Coco, Coco Cabana. It's the place, it's the place, Coco Cabana. Coco, Coco Cabana. It's time for the gaming discussions. Switch Number has one. announced an OLED model for the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo will sell the new dock separately. And if you haven't seen this, we're about to watch it. And then we'll get into the discussion because I want everybody on the same page, the same disappointment, uh, all of that good yep. stuff uh, as we are. So uh -huh. let's take a look at the new Switch. The white looks really cool. Yeah, I do. I do like the color scheme they went for this. It, it makes it definitely makes it pop more. Yep, seven inch. The previous one was six point two inches. the song's way better than the the console i do like yeah. the new adjustable stand because this, adjustable this stand. right it's yeah the stand some, like, on the ding thing the original is absolute trash yeah and enhanced audio Check me. The only thing update for the dock, a land port. Yeah, like when they showed the TV, I was like, oh, they're about to say 4K resolution. Psych. October 8th and it's going to be I don't know if it says yeah so it doesn't say the price yeah. which we'll get into that in just a moment so I mean there are some nice things here because what they don't say because I'll just get into uh, into the article here uh, Nintendo Switch 2 and Pro Rumors have been at the epicenter of the Nintendo community for quite some time now and we have our first look at what the company has been working on the big N announced its updated Nintendo Switch model which boasts a 7 inch OLED screen that pr promises vibrantly vivid colors to enhance the portable gaming experience the Switch OLED will come with a 7 inch screen a wired LAN port a stand for tabletop play an improved audio experience and internal storage of up to 64 gigabytes. It will run, uh, it will run put to 720 or 1080p docked, and will be releasing later this year on October 8th for $350. Um, so, all right. Mm. So let me just put this out here because I know we, uh, when we talked about it, and we and if for the for you guys in the chat who don't already get it. Um, Dan says, why would someone just play it on an uncomfortable bench next See, to the See, they don't door? want you to ask those <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, exactly. Exactly. It's like a sleight of hand trick. Um, I know I know, we're going to come off as negative Nancy's, mm -hmm. but let me just play devil's advocate. 
Nintendo never True. said this was going to be 4K. They didn't say that. Now, do, should they, should they explore that? Should we still expect them to do a 4K model? Of course. But if if the Nintendo community is upset about this, you know, I'm not saying that they should or shouldn't be. At the same time, they should have quelled expectations. It's just it's no different than um, you know uh, direct Nintendo Direct. Like ru- people self create these rumors, self report these. They mm-hmm. they get they always get hot and heavy. So it's like you you bring this on yourself. Don't blame Nintendo because they never said this. It was some, you know, person with a camera who wanted clout that created this hype video, um, created like some hype train or some hype articles or whatnot saying that, oh, yeah, this is going to be this, this and that. And, it, and it's not, you know, no, no one outside of Nintendo, you know, or no one internally in Nintendo yeah. confirmed that um, this would be the case. <sighs> Like, I, I know that it's not the case, you know, I know it's not necessarily like what, mm-hmm. you know, nothing was ever said about it. Like, they, they even said that it's not going to happen. Um, now, now it is happening. Um, yeah. It just. It, yeah, it does it feel like, like a half step. step. And, you know. It does. And, you know, there, like I said, there are some nice things like the 64 gigs yeah. uh, of internal memory is nice because that 32 oh, yeah. gigs goes fast. Um, um, the better, I don't know, you know, too much about the audio experience, so I can't speak on that. But, you know, it is going to be nice. The seven inches may not seem like much from the 6.2, but, you know, it will make a difference, especially with the OLED screen. Because if you had like an OG Vita that was mm-hmm. OLED, you know how much that thing mm-hmm. popped. So, you know, it, it should get the same kind of experience from the switch. Um, and the only thing, and I'm indifferent about is the wired land port. Like, like cool. Like it's with modern consoles. Cause a lot of the modern consoles have a land port already at the same time. It's never been Nintendo's MO. Like, why are you in it? And with the switch of all things, right? Like they could have done it with the Wii. They could have done it with the Wii U. Um, because it was just strictly for in-house use, but the switch which is which is whole shtick is to be on the go and at home. It's like you put in a land port and like yes, for those people who are hardcore on mm-hmm. Smash Brothers and Mario Kart and like big online games, yes, the the wired land support is crucial because it, it helps with lag. At the same time, it feels like it's not needed for what like, the switch. I, I does. would disagree, uh, just because Nintendo's online service is trash. So improving on it by having a LAN port so it is not based off of Wi-Fi, I think will be a help. I don't think it will fix the inherent issues that are with the Nintendo online service and everything. Um, But it will make downloading games faster. It will serve better connection when you are playing online multiplayer games. Um, That's that's the only only reason to have it. Uh, It doesn't, you know, make your games look better it doesn't do anything like that um the the, there are definitely like nice things like the oled yeah the best handheld that's ever lived had an oled screen the vita guess who's now mimicking the vita yeah because it was the best the best around (laughs) i like the 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 new stand um you know and like you were saying like there there was never promises that will be 4k it just makes sense that it should you know yeah especially in this day and age like when like especially when we have the ps5 at um and the series X and S, which can run, which can support AK. When there's not even AK TVs yeah. that that much out in the wild, it can support yeah. AK. They're future proofing themselves. Yeah, Nintendo's and still like I understand, they're trying to make it affordable. Like this, this console is like three hundred and fifty, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. they're trying yeah. to stay in an affordable range for people, which I one hundred percent support and agree with. I, I just would love yeah. to have seen something a little bit more powerful. And I think that's the the majority of the people that agree. are looking at this. They just wish there was something a little bit more powerful, um, you know. And there was another thought that I had with the the port. Um, oh, like cloud based gaming that will improve as well because like you're you're going to be hooked 
straight Fair. to it. So That's there, there are too. definitely boons with this, but it's not as much as people were hoping. So, <sighs> yeah, I do like um because we talked about I do like the fact of people are Nintendo's like hey guys you you play you you don't care about the upgrades for the OLED but you like the wired land part of the dock yeah I like that as well I was so. curious to see that in you know that they're going to sell the dock separately um because like they're they're not yeah. necessarily enhancing the dock other than you know the ethernet port that they're adding uh so like I'm glad it's going to be backwards compatible right. with the original switch also so I like that I like that a lot moving on yeah to our second story of the night, EA Play Live has been scheduled and announced with five separate broadcasts across the month of July. They will feature Battlefield 2042 and Apex Legends. However, Dragon Age and Mass Effect will be absent. And that kind of makes sense because they seem like they're years off, so it's like, don't mm -hmm. keep showing me stuff if it's not in anywhere in the near oh, yeah. future. So I'm fine with that. They announced it that they, they said these are in the works. We're yep. going to shut up until we're ready to show something. Um, but yeah, I was kind of surprised because, you know, the main festivities are going to be on July 22nd, but I was surprised that they're going to have these lead up events uh, to it. So the first one was actually today. Um, it was, it, most of these are going to just be like panels, um, the, the meaty stuff with like gameplay is not going to be till later in the month, but festivities actually kicked off today at one o'clock, uh, or noon, uh, our time, uh, with the spotlight called the future of first person shooters in this panel, dice general manager, Oscar Gabrielson, dice, LA general manager, Christian grass, respawn entertainment founder and group G general manager, Vince Zampella and apex legends game director chad grenier will follow will join ign stella chung to discuss battlefield 2042 apex legends and the future of the genre as a whole the discussion will cover the battlefield 2042 reveal and what fans of both games can expect to learn about uh more about during the big july 22nd ea play broadcast next up on july 13th at noon central time is another spotlight focused on independent studios. In the discussion hosted by Todd Martins of the Los Angeles Times, Hayslight's Joseph Ferris, Zoinks Olav Redmalm, Silver Rain's Mel Phillips, and Ab Abu Barker Salim, and Velen's Guha Bala will discuss games like It Takes Two, Lost in Random, and Knockout City, as well as the important role independent games and studios play in the video game industry. Next up on July 19th at 6 p.m. East, uh, 6 p.m. Central Time, EA Sports and Madden 22 Madden NFL 22 development team will hold a panel hosted by play-by-play -play announcer of the Madden Championship Series, Nick Mazesco. He'll be joined by EA Sports Sean Grady, Tom Lischke, and Andre w Weingarten to discuss the development team's vision for Madden NFL 22's franchise mode. The mode were large, was largely planned last year for its lack of updates and innovation, um, and the team hopes to discuss how the community's feedback shaped its focus on the mode. If you'd like to learn the basics of what Madden NFL 22 is doing, both in and out of franchise mode, check out our in-depth preview here. Um, the final EA Live Spotlight kickoff uh, kicks off on July 20th, at noon central time and will once again feature EA sports. However, this time electronic arts is being cryptic about just what will be featured in the spotlight. You can see the full description from EA below quote, look, we're not allowed to tell you much about this one yet. Sorry, but we can say this spotlight will highlight an extremely cool new addition to an extremely popular and long running EA sports franchise. We may have, we may have said too much already. Just keep your calendar free. Okay. All of these streams culminate with the big show on July 22nd at noon uh, noon Central Time. Um, this this final live stream from Electronic Arts, hosted by WWE superstar Austin Creed, will feature a or AKA Xavier Woods, will feature a strong focus on games with new gameplay reveals, some giveaways, and quote other surprises. The flagship show will go for about 40 minutes, and while EA is playing its cards close to the vest for now, it is promising new information about Battlefield 2042 and Apex Legends. First gameplay of Lost in Random, and quote a couple other games to highlight as well. That's a lot. It's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, you know, normally we just get about it like in the in past years when they've done EA events, 
It's just like, look, they do a lot of pre-show and then do like an hour of like a main show. But it seems like they're taking a whole month to talk about different things. And I like how they're giving like panels, you know, their own time instead of just like chunking them off to the side. And, you know, people yeah. who want to watch that will join in. I like I want to know their cryptic sports announcement because it's like a long running franchise. And it's like, well, we know FIFA like we already know they're bringing back college football unless they're already ready to talk about that already. But that's still a few years away. Um it, I'm excited. I'm definitely excited for the main one on July 22nd to see 40 minutes of gameplay stuff. So I'm looking, looking yeah, forward like, to see what they're going to bring. I hope the EA is smart enough not to do NCAA football this early on. You know, like yeah, because they said we won't get it until as, as uh, no no yeah, earlier than so, July like, of I, I feel like. Hopefully they're not rushing to put that out there and show it and everything. Um, I feel like it's yeah. going to be NBA live. I really feel like it's going to be NBA live. Yeah. Ooh. You know what I, that, Yeah. Like I really <laughs> feel like they're, they're trying to get back on that horse and it's like, no, like just let it die. Just let it die. Right. <laughs> Quit beating the dead horse, Dan. Just, wow! Just let it rest. Another piece. football game. <laughs> Both soccer <laughs> and football. <laughs> always gonna get those. Always gonna get yeah. those. Um, it's always cool. Like I love Austin Creed, um, or Xavier Woods, whichever way you want yeah. to slice it. Um, I got to meet him at yep. VidCon, and he is a really, really nice guy really really nice guy so like i'm glad that he's getting to do more and more cool things in the the gaming industry like i know um yep i think he's that's what makes more sense on murdoch's question g4 said he could go uh yeah yeah so i'm i'm assuming it just it it's going okay it's going to be a a, a plus for g4 to get more eyes on their content and everything which I yep, like thousand percent. I have been watching just Sessler stuff. Cause like, he's the only one that I, I really care about uh, Adam Sessler and just like his kind of yeah. takes on some of the news and everything that's been going on. Like he did a really uh, good yeah. kind of dive into um, Halo and why it's important and how, infinite can actually be good and it, it was just it was it was really good so i've, I've been enjoying it i've been really enjoying it. get to just hear yeah. him talk about games because he's just so right Passionate yeah and just well spoken like he's a writer at heart um dan yep. <laughs> but here's the twist oh yeah. twist it's not football it's football true true football. hey but knockout city is amazing It's so yeah, good. Fantastic. So and I meant to I meant to go get some um money cards to buy it to buy because oh, I think I'm actually gonna buy the full game. And you should too. So, We're not getting paid to say that. You should so, get it as well. It's really good. Yes. Moving nope. on to number three. Nope. This is also some EA news because EA owns no, does EA EA doesn't own Dead Space? Okay, that's what I thought. I was yeah, like, it's Capcom. No, it's EA. Yeah. Maybe we'll get an answer. Maybe in EA Play. Dead Space Revival reportedly a full remake of the original, inspired by the Resident Evil remakes. Yep, and as as it says here in the article, a new report from Games Beat goes into more depth on the reported Dead Space Revival at EA Motive, describing it as a full remake of the original game with inspiration taking taken from the recent Resident Evil remakes. The report says that the studio is rebooting the franchise with a full-fledged remake of the first Dead Space, with EA being convinced to go ahead with the project thanks to the success of Resident Evil 2 Remake from Capcom. This remake will reportedly use the original game as a strong foundation, but add modern visuals and new gameplay mechanics inspired by other entries in the franchise. This comes as EA has reportedly also warmed up the, uh, to the idea of single-player adventures. And after the success of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order... Reports also suggest that the publisher has cut out multiplayer and live service elements from Dragon Age 4. That's a random 
throw in with that one. Um, so yeah, we all know like re- like that's the whole reason Capcom has had like a comeuppance the last several years. They they can do seemingly they can do no wrong on that end with just like they're just banging out you know game after game with Resident Evil remakes. I know eight we'll get into just a little bit has been selling like gangbusters. Um, I know. Devil May Cry 5 did well when it came out a few years ago, and I know the Resident Evil remakes have been killing it, too. 2 specifically, like, 3 three has been more hit or miss, but it has sold well, but 2 has definitely been more of the beloved of the remakes so far. So if Dead Space can even copy a fraction of that, and ma- and especially the visuals, like, Dead Space for, like, atmosphere for a horror game, it's specifically in the first one, was fantastic. It creeped me out. Like I had to, <laughs> I had to play with the lights on after a while. They got that creepy for me. Um, so I, if they can bring that back and capture what made Dead Space Dead Space w- with like more of a modern look, yeah, I'll be like I, I never played a ton of Dead Space. Like I wasn't big into horror games, but I do remember playing a little bit and like had to play in broad daylight, blinds open with the lights on because uh, it was so scary and everything. Um, <laughs> So I'm glad to see the franchise getting some life put into it. I know Murdoch saying, I don't want to remake. I want new content for Dead Space. But I think this is a way to get the ball rolling for new content. Think about uh, Crash Bandicoot. We hadn't got a new Crash Bandicoot for a very long time until yep. we got the remake of the trilogies and or the remake of the trilogy. And then we got Crash Team Racing. And then we got Crash mm-hmm. 4. So it yep. takes... It might take some, you know, push to get this to happen because if you think about Dead Space 3, EA had such ridiculous goals that it would never meet and it killed it. So it, this way, it will bring back fans yep. of the original, updated graphics looking good, and then it can move forward from there if it does well. So I, I'm I'm glad to see them going back to this because it is a very interesting and different uh, type of game in the horror genre and a lot of games has taken from dead space now so yep. it'd be good to see that franchise to live again uh, uh, uh. yep and, and oh. <laughs> <laughs> or die again um but but uh <laughs> but no and, th- and that is the supposed rumor right like they're doing the remake to give time because they're like with dragon age and mass effect they're doing sequels to those finally the the supposed rumor is they're going to do a fourth dead space game but they're doing a remake of the yeah. first one to get fans reintroduced and re-excited about the franchise and give the team yeah. more time so to, i'm, to I'm glad to see it happening um so we'll just see we'll see if it's going to be good or not Moving on to number four on our list today, Assassin's Creed Infinity is a live surface effort with multiple settings and connected games, and it won't be out until at least 2024. Yes, yeah, so this was a random out of nowhere article. Now, granted, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm an Assassin's Creed fan, not, not a huge one, but I did love Odyssey. Odyssey has been my favorite one in recent years. Um, need to go did back and play Origins? Valhalla again. Um, or start origins yep. rather um at this point but so i'm gonna read the original article first because okay. they do an update for this um so the original article repeats a report on bloomberg has revealed that ubisoft is working on assassin's creed infinity described as a live service platform that features multiple settings and connected games with a u- unique look and feel according to early details ubisoft has been inspired by th- the success of fortnite and grand theft auto online both of which are constantly evolving titles that offer new experiences with seasonal updates. Furthermore, the project is being handled by Ubisoft Quebec and Ubisoft Montreal. Um, Jason Schreier added that Assassin's Creed Infinity details are still thin on the ground, but he speculates it's a type of hub that allows gamers to play multiple entries in the franchise, regardless of how big or small they are. Quote, whereas Assassin's Creed games each unfolded in specific historical settings, such as ancient Greece or Ptolemaic uh, Ptolemaic Egypt, 
Infinity will contain multiple settings with room to expand to others in the months and years following its debut, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing a project under development. Individual games on the platform might look and feel different, but they will all be connected. Presumably this is entirely separate to whatever the next mainline Assassin's Creed game is, and since Infinity is allegedly not coming out until at least 2024, it's a long way off at this point. Um, now the update... Uh, that was ha that popped up today says Ubisoft has a posted on its official site on the future of Assassin's Creed franchise, confirming it is in the very early stages of development on Assassin's Creed Infinity. The game will feature two creative directors in the shape of Clint Hawking from S the who worked on Splinter Cell: Chaos Theory, Watch Do and Watch Dogs Legion, and Jonathan Dumont, who worked on Assassin's Creed Syndicate and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Quote, rather than continue to pass the baton from game to game, we profoundly believe this is an opportunity for one of Ubisoft's most beloved franchises to evolve in a more integrated and collaborative manner that's less centered on studios and more focused on talent and leadership, no matter where they are within Ubisoft. So, lots to unpack here. Um, my first thought is, good. Like, at, at, I'm sure at first blush, a lot of people were like, oh, I don't want this. You know, this is not, you know, Fortnite. This is not GTA Online. This is not Red Dead Online. I don't want something that just is continually evolving. To me, I say good because granted, yes, Ubisoft has been on this thing where they, you know, lately it's been like release a couple games uh, a year apart and then take a break. Like they're on a break right now. They're doing more content for Valhalla as it comes out. Um, so who knows when the next, uh, if they'll do an Assassin's Creed before Infinity, I assume they will, but who knows how many they'll do before Infinity. But, you know, I know people got burned out when they did Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed year over year over year, and they kept get, making those games bigger, kept adding more stuff for you to do, made it, made it, like, I poured over an easy 200 hours in Odyssey, and I still have to play the DLC. Valhalla, I've heard, is even longer than that. So... If it's going to be more bite-sized, but lets you just expand and keep building on the game, which is what, going back to EA for a moment, this is what people wish they would do with their f sports franchises instead of spending $60 every year for just roster updates. Just buy a patch for like $20, $25 and update the freaking rosters and have at it instead of, you know, until you're ready to make a full-fledged full update on the game. They're doing it with Assassin's Creed this way, and I... I, for one, am excited because, you know, I don't have a ton of time with as many games that come out nowadays, especially like hidden ones like Knockout City. We keep saying it again and again. We didn't expect the game to do what it did, and we played it on just about every stream. So with surprises and other big games that are out there that I know I'm going to play, them doing more of a bite-sized Assassin's Creed experience would be something that would be up my alley and would still get me into that franchise. Yeah, like... The live service has gave me pause, but I understand the way, yeah. like, it makes sense where it could be the various studios that do work on Assassin's Creed can be working on content to go towards Infinity. Apparently, Infinite and Infinity are the 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 way to go with subtitles. You know, Halo Infinite now. Assassin's Creed Infinity. Yeah. Um, but yep. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting, sagas. like if done right, if done right, this could be something cool. Yeah. If done wrong, it is just a cash grab to get people to buy season passes and people will fall off just like Avengers uh, or Anthem. Like I don't want to yep. see Assassin's Creed go that way. Like in in the way of doing it poorly, I want to see them do it well. Uh, you know, they they say Fortnite and GTA. Yeah. Well, Fortnite and GTA are not story based games. Like GTA is, but GTA Online is not. It's nope. just free roam. So it's going to be very nope. interesting to see how they go about making this happen. But I would love to see. Okay, well you. You have a bite-sized story that is set in Russia in the 1400s. Okay, now you've got uh, yep. something that's set in America. You know, during you know this timeline, you and be able to like go different places, but you have an overarching story in the normal yep. world when you're out of the. I want to say Artemis. That's not it. 
animus. I was close. <laughs> when you're out of the animus, like having something that connect all of that through and everything, I think would be a great way to do it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it would be, and, and it would make, and it would not put some, like, yes, Ubisoft's got a ton of studios and a lot of them work on, uh, like for Assassin's Creed in particular, they have a lot of studios that work on it at one time, but mm-hmm. this would take a lot of pressure off of them to get all of this stuff for a huge open world game done in time for yep. like whatever release they were planning and, and instead reduces their workload and gives them a chance to make, you know, to make the game vibrant. Yeah. And, to make and just work, imagine like know? if it had multiple studios working on one single game and to either, you know, get the, the base yeah. game out or, you know, have two working on the base game and then have two working on the next DLC. Like, you would have so much horsepower behind making it actually good. Uh, and I, I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. And uh, going to our comments real quick, Murdoch says, Black Flag was my last one. Playing them all back to back became repetitive and boring. And, like, I loved Black Flag. It was kind of a, it was a different Assassin's Creed. It was very different. Yeah. Uh, I thought Assassin's Creed 3 was boring. Like, I almost stopped playing after that. But Black Flag was really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, you know, Syndicate was just awful, in my opinion. Like, it was it was really boring. Like, I know they tried the, you know, the different characters and all of that. And yeah, the, the I, like, it was just boring to me. I know Ali loved Syndicate. Unity, I thought, was okay. Uh, like the yeah. the new parkour system that they introduced was really good, but other than that, but once they took a break and then came back with Origin, like Origin was awesome. Origin was awesome. Yeah. Once they focused on making it more of like an RPG, is yeah. when that series and, got revived. You again. know, like I do want to get into Odyssey, I do want to get into Valhalla, but there's just so big, big of games. Like it's daunting to to even think about oh like it gone are the days <laughs> of assassin's creed where you can just kind of go through the story and you know it take you 20 30 hours now yeah. it's hundreds of hours you know so exactly that, that's that's right. where we're at right now <laughs> for sure yeah so like it as, as it stated this is a far off they got pl- we're at least at least three years out from this being an actual idea um, so hopefully they can work on it, get it right, make it a thing that not just that can line their pockets, but also be what fans want and are true yes, to the hardcore 100%. Assassin's Creed fans. Murdoch says, did y'all ever play the mobile only games? I'm assuming you're talking about Assassin's Creed. Um, I know that they put out one that was like based in China, one that was in Russia, I want to say, and one was in India, something like that. No, I don't want to say those were... I don't know if those came to mobile, but I know they put it on Vita first, yeah. and then they ported it um, over to I did play some of those. Um, I didn't play all of them. I did play the the one that was on Vita where you play. It was like the first time you played a female protagonist, and it was like based in New Orleans. Um, it was pretty good. Yeah, Liberation. Oh, that one was um, pretty Liberation. good. I didn't finish it. Uh, you know, kind of a running theme uh, of me and gaming, but uh, it was good. Like, you know, it was the, it was the first like yeah. bigger game other than uh, golden abyss on the Vita. So, you know, the Vita lives guys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dan says, uh, Dan says, although I feel the, the more recent game, I feel with the more recent games, there isn't much as an investment in assassination, which is what it was originally known for. Yeah. Like I do agree with that. Um, because like if a character is like above your level, you can't assassinate them. You can hurt them a little bit, but you can't assassinate them. Right. And that was one of the, like the, the coolest feelings is this like just murking somebody like out of nowhere, you know, and even oh, yeah. like the, the dual blades, like the hidden blades and everything, like they kind of nerfed it and they've, they've changed some things as it's went along, but it it's still a good game, but yeah. I do, I do see where you're coming from, Dan. And it has gotten away from some of the original kind of stuff. Uh, Murdoch said, I got tired of fighting groups of enemies everywhere. I went. Yeah. 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 That's why you, you, you get the poison dart Fair. that makes like the big guy like fight everybody else and you just run away. 
<laughs> exactly. Work smart, Speaking not hard. of working smart and not hard, Kojima looks to set the development of his next game with Microsoft as both parties sign a letter of intent. So this has been hot and heavy. You know, the rumors of Kojima working with Microsoft, as you know, when Phil Spencer did that welcome video for Bethesda, once the acquisition finally went through, there was like a Luden statue from Death Stranding behind him on his desk. Um, there's been all these rumors. Um, so because everyone thought Death Stranding would come to Xbox, but instead they're just probably going to do an original IP. Now, who knows? Maybe while they're working on this game, he they could port Death Stranding over. We'll see. Um, as Kojima is set to bring Death Stranding to PS5 in the form of Death Stranding Director's Cut, it looks like his next project will be a collaboration with Microsoft, as both parties have signed a letter of intent to create a game. This comes from GamesBeat, who reports that both parties have signed the letter with the intent to work out publishing details on a new Xbox game. The si the signal This signals a key step in negotiations and effectively means Kojima's next game will be a PC and Xbox exclusive. The teams have spent months hammering out details about this partnership, and while lawyers still have fi to fine-tune the details, PlayStation fans shouldn't expect to play Kojima's next uh, to play Kojima's next game on PS5. This new project, however, and the point of this partnership is to quote unlock the creativity of Kojima Productions using Microsoft's technology, as opposed to greenlighting a specific pitch. Therefore, it seems like the game hasn't even been properly ironed out yet. Yeah, and like with that, like I think Kojima, after being tied down and just the the overbearingness yep. of Konami, like he does not want to get stuck with okay, you own my studio or I work for you. It's like okay, right. you want me to make a game? I'm down to make one game for you, you know. And he, he can go back and forth, yep. and there's nothing wrong with that. He wants no 100 percent like look i know like his last metal gear game phantom pain and technically ground mm -hmm. zeros came to both platforms but you yep. know everyone thinks of metal gear as a playstation uh you know property um and you're rightfully so like if silent hill uh silent hills i know was supposed to be his next project or his last project with konami and that fell through but um I think after that, he got really burned, and he wants to let his hair down and just, you know, party hard and just, you know, have fun making games. He doesn't care who it's with. He doesn't care on what platform. He just wants to work with a company who wants yeah, to see his and I, I think it's a healthy thing as well with both companies wanting him. So he's going to get the best deal. He's in demand. Like, his games always sell well. So, right. you know, I know we'll talk about more of Death Stranding later on, um, but you know that being a playstation thing i think a lot of playstation fans and most of the industry were like okay well are they going to be a second party for playstation and then eventually get bought by playstation and clearly kojima is like no that's that's right. not like he he's no nope. yeah he's I'm gonna you know <laughs> do a second party for whichever one's gonna pay so you know more power to him more power to him Moving yep. into our sixth category, the PlayStation News Legacy 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 segment. Salmon and Doop Boop 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 Do and I Yeah. Boom. PlayStation News. First up, Among Us PlayStation release date possibly leaked for August 31st and will be getting three special editions later this year. So I was hoping uh, to kind of spoil some of state of play news. I was kind of hoping when this leaked earlier in the week uh, and then they said state of play, I'm like, maybe they'll make this official at state of play. They didn't. So I'm hoping this is the true because, I mean, it's it, it'd be soon if that were the case. Um, I'm looking forward to playing Among Us. I'm looking forward to playing it on PlayStation. And I'm, I'd am i be looking, I would definitely want to, that would be definitely a several stream type of thing between us, you know, if it works out. Um, but if the special editions um, are intriguing. Now, I did sneak a, a peek at some of the prices and... It seems I haven't gone through what all it comes with, but the prices just at a at first blush seem a little outrageous. But let's get into that. 
Um, if you're looking forward to Among Us on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, then you're in luck, as there's going to be three separate special editions for the game. Uh, first up, the Among Us Cre Cremate Edition, which retails for $30 and includes the base game plus all DLC and the following extras. Retail exclusive downloadable content, 3D lenticular case, Imposter Syndrome sticker sheet by Alyssa Herman, one of 12 special Mira Headquarter holographic access cards by Hanako Lambert, Folded Scaled Map poster by Canon Kasane, Redeemable code for six PC slash phone wallpapers by Amy Liu. Uh, not your cup of tea? Then how about the Among Us Imposter Edition, which will set you back $50 and again come with the base experience, all DLC plus the following. Retail exclusive downloadable content, uh, the lenticular case, the all the above and then including cremate, uh, Crewmate versus Imposter Lanyard by Hanako Lambert, Purple Crewmate Plush by Hanako Lambert, Spinning into Space Enamel Spinner Pin by Cynthia Herr, and Limited Edition Imposter Edition Box. And finally, there's a $90 Among Us Ejected Edition, which offers a host of extra goodies in addition to the base game and DLC. Um, retail exclusive downloadable content, Limited Edition Among Us Steelbook, a bunch of the stuff from the uh, other editions, um, Crewmate Fleece Blanket, uh, yeah, that's right, a fleece blanket, by Hanako Lampert, um, Red Imposter Beanie, and Limited Edition Ejected Edition Box. Okay. One, that's a lot for, like, I know it's physical stuff and everything. It just seems a little pricey. Yeah. Two. Yeah, I know. When I saw that $90 edition, I was like, whoa. Two, I <laughs> okay, want to buy the $90 edition just because of the red beanie to give it to Amy. So we could do the red hat gang. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, Murdoch's like, what are the, what artists are these people? No, not for among us too pricey licensing. Yeah. Like it, it's pricey. It is physical copies of the game. So I think that's where a lot of it is coming yeah. from is that it is a physical copy. It's not just a, um, it's not just a online version of it and everything. I think the digital version, you will still get it for, yeah. you know, four ninety nine or whatever it is. Um, but like the physical version, I think this yeah. is the first time it's been physical because I don't think the switch version is physical. Um, definitely not the, uh, um, yeah. Has it come to Xbox yet? Uh, I know it's on Game Pass for PC, okay. but it hasn't so come to like Xbox. So, like, a lot of it, yet. like, that's why they're saying, like, oh, you get you get this kind of case with this, and then you get all of these stickers, and, all, you know, you get the DLC, you get all of this. Like, it's kind of outrageous. I'm not, I'm not defending them. Game is still funner at $20 yeah. or whatever it is now. It's $5. Like the game is like five dollars on yeah. PC and all of that, so you know it's for the people that are diehards that want yeah. the physical stuff. You know, like more power to them, but you know, I ain't buying it. I'll buy the. I'll buy the. I'm good with just yeah, the no. the version that I've got on. I've got it for PC, my phone, and then I've got it on uh, the Switch. So I think I'm done buying Among Us. <laughs> but yeah. if you want to get a physical version, there you go, guys. You can drop some some dollars and stab some people if you so choose. You so choose. Moving on, exactly. guys. PlayStation's indie support team reportedly severely understaffed as Sony prioritizes blockbuster games. And I know this is something that we've talked about several times over the last few weeks that PlayStation is ramping yep. up them big old games. Yep, the money makers. But, you know, it's it, the phrase dance with the one that brought you because, you know, in the early PlayStation 4 days, it was ports and indies that made the PS4 mm -hmm. successful in the early years. Um, but a new report on Bloomberg has shed light on just how frustrating the situation is for indie developers to get some help from Sony in getting some exposure on their games on the PlayStation Store. Things kicked off earlier this week when an indie publisher spoke out about numerous issues they had with a 
a specific format holder, which wasn't named but heavily implied to be Sony. According to numerous sources from independent developers and individuals at Sony, the format holder's PlayStation indie support team is actually highly understaffed. Instead of putting an equal focus on both indie games and blockbuster titles, Sony is very much prioritizing the latter. Recently, Chatter Online claimed that the PlayStation manufacturer was charging $25,000 for exposure on the PlayStation Store for indies. More developers looked to social media to air their grievances with the format holder yesterday. Now, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier had added more details about the issues. Quote, lots of talk and headlines about Sony charging $25,000 for store placement, but that's not what matters. The real story, as I've heard from both indie devs and Sony folks, is that PlayStation's support team for indies is severely understaffed. Their priority is big blockbusters. The developers who have spoken out against Sony's practices revealed that they sometimes have to had to wait weeks or months for a response from their contacts. They claim that this is completely different from what studios experience with Nintendo and Microsoft, who are far more willing to support and work with indies. Mm. Shuhei shaking his well, head. Well, you know, this Gio Corsi was to. over, you know, the indie side of things with PlayStation for a very long time. Yeah. And he really ushered in, like you were talking about, the beginning of PlayStation 4. Like, he was more on the Vita side of stuff, but he worked with all the indies and everything. And right. you saw that it was a very healthy place for, you know, smaller companies. And now PlayStation is just worried yeah. about the big people, the the big ones. And then you were saying 25000 yep. to get... Like that, that is a yeah. lot to, to, you know, yeah. For like a that, that's a, studio. like, what is the ROI on that? You know, it's like you pay 25,000. Are you going to make right. that up and more? Like, you know, when you're a business, you, you've got to market, but you've got to be smart about it. You know, would their budget be better spent, you know, marketing on Facebook or getting YouTubers that have larger, you know, realms of influence or twitch streamers or whatever um and then then just not wanting to really talk to them and you have the juxtaposition of uh you know xbox and nintendo how they're treating indie developers and everything and how they're showing them love yeah. and it's a far cry from where playstation was a few years ago where they were known for that. Yeah. Uh, but I know Nintendo has come out and they've been really good for indie developers uh, that were struggling to get noticed. Uh, so, you know, we, we are where we are, but it's kind of sad to see PlayStation change so much uh, when they were known for being, you know, pretty much an indie cost. Yeah, the indie place. Like, the indie place. I know xbox yeah. id you know came about because of how good playstation was doing yep. with indies and yep indies so you know that that, that's that's where we are that's where we are yep so hey you know as long as we're getting love from someone because i know nintendo does direct exclusive directs sometimes for just indie games so you know at least they're getting love from somebody. It's just a sad that it's not as also including PlayStation at this point. But yeah, hopefully Bring that'll change. Hey. Full of grace. Moving on to our next bit of Sony news. Sony hints that more director's cut style of games could be on the way. Yeah, so uh, we'll get into it later. But, you know, they first mm -hmm. announced Death, Death Stranding director's cut at the Summer Games Fest. Then they recently just showed off uh, Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut and Zack's never-ending battle with finishing that game. Um, on P so, Yeah, exactly. Um, they said that they will be bringing Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut on PS5 and PS4 this summer, but that its head of Worldwide Studios has hinted that this may not be the last of its kind. Speaking on Twitter, former Guerrilla Games overlord Her Herman Holst had the following to say, quote, one of my favorite open worlds to explore, now with even more to see and do on a whole new island. Our director's cut releases will all offer new content and on PS5. We'll leverage the hardware's advanced features. Notice Holst seemed to be talking about director's cut games in the large sense, specifically mentioning release, release says with an S. 
This could just be a typo on his part, but to be fair, we can definitely see this sort of thing garnering steam, as there's plenty of features to be squeezed out of the PS5 versions. Yeah, like, yeah. My thing, I'm about to say, my thing is, is like, look, if you're going to keep adding stuff, like, if you're going to do, because, you know, this is kind of like a Nintendo thing, right, that we've seen from when the, what they port from their Wii, Wii U versions to the Switch version, like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, Super Mario 3D World, uh, plus Bowser's Fury, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like all the things, Yoshi's, uh, well, not Yoshi's Crafted World, that's a new one, but a lot of the ones they've ported over, they're not just ports, mm -hmm. they add in new stuff, so if PlayStation could copy that, and specifically their story-based he heavy games, like Ghost of Tsushima, um, you know, if they add in more story to get you to go back into that world, I am perfectly fine with you know if it now if they do like dreams director's cut don't know if i'll invest in that again but you know if they do last of us part two director's cut you know they do well what else uh days gone director's cut or you know what what have you any of their big games from the last several years god of war director's cut i'll buy it again gladly <sighs> excuse me i was yawning um murdoch's i they kind of answered it. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're trying to get whatever money they can, but I feel like they're in a position where they're having to put stuff on the PS5 to get people that have bought the PS5 to stay right. happy. You know what I mean? Uh, they don't have a lot of stuff coming out right yep. now for it. So it's like, okay, what can we port? What's an easier way for us to port? And let's add a little something. Ghost being kind of the different there. Um but for me, it's like, can these directors cut, do they actually like add something that's substantial with Sh Shushima? We're actually getting a whole new Island. We're getting new enemies. We're getting armor for the horses. Uh, you know, we're getting a new story and everything, you yeah. know, with death stranding, it's probably going to be the same thing. It's just ported over. looks a little bit better, probably uses more, you know, of the features of the PlayStation yeah. five. You know, Dual but sense features, yeah. You know, God of War, they're not going to add anything to that. They're just going to port it. You know, so not everything is going to work that way. Right, and here's a key difference: Nintendo, when they do their ports over, now, granted, yes, they're good, they're great games, but Nintendo's actually more money grubby because they don't give you an option to buy the extra content separately. They're just like pay sixty dollars again, whereas. PlayStation, at least with their, uh, I, we'll get into it with Death Stranding a little bit more, but um, with Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut, you can buy, if you want, if you have the PS4 version and just want to buy the director's cut directly on PS5, you can pay um, $30. If you want to just buy the director's cut on PS4, that's $20. And then the upgrade to the PS5 version is going to be $10. Mm -hmm. They at least give you a cheaper path. You're not just paying $60 again, or in this case, $70 for the PS5 version. Yeah. Unless you don't already own the game. So at least they're giving you a cheaper way out. They're not just charging you $60, $70 again for this. Yeah, for a and game it's a more of more like a DLC pack and everything. Uh, Murdoch's, Murdoch says, I love Ghost and I will exactly. play more of it uh, since it has substance, substance uh, but would much rather have a two than an addition. So a second one rather than addition. And I, I agree. Like I would take a second game over a DLC yeah. pack, but it's going to be a long time before we get a second one. So I, I'll say people forget, like it's, it's not, even, yeah, it's, so it's not I'll even take a year old. Yet. Some additional stuff while you, you have a portion of the development team still working on doing in, we're fixing to get into it, you know, doing yeah. updates, you know, adding more content, but you know, before they move into the second game, which I've highly think that they will do. I don't think, yeah. you know, it having that big of a success, they're just going to do a one and done on, you know, on Tsushima. So, yeah. To be fair, like, yes, with what we've talked over the last few months about them ramping up, like doing like in, pumping money into their studios to build their teams, to do more projects at once, mm -hmm. to do all this. That's going to take time, especially if they're now just doing the ramp up. Like, yes, some teams have already started building over the last couple of years. But, you know, stuff like this takes time, especially for these huge blockbuster games like 
you know, Horizon Forbidden West, the next God of War Ragnarok, like whatever the next game from Naughty Dog will be. Like this, it takes time. So they need, you know, like you said, tie this over until that, till, till then, I guess. Like, and that's a, that's a hundred percent what they're doing. The the games that they have down the pipeline are not ready. They still need to fester and you know bake and kept in the oven because they know Sony knows that they are now in a position to where they can't mess up these franchises like the ones they've established and made blockbuster money like ooh koodles of money on yeah. they can't screw up so they want to take time they want to give the teams the love and you know the time that they need so they're going to give uh, these small increments until then to that way yeah, we're not completely because you know like they they have to put out stuff to keep money going on because they are not big uh, like Microsoft. They do not have Microsoft money. Uh, so Sony has to play a nope. different kind of game. Nope. Uh, but speaking of Go Shushima, of Shushima, uh, there will be a free update that is on the mm-hmm. way with a new photo mode features and Legends content that will be added. Yeah, so it's set to get a new update in the coming weeks, which will add brand new Legends content to the game alongside some new options and features. Announced on the PlayStation blog with the reveal of Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut, this new update will be releasing soon and contain new accessibility options for controller remapping, the ability to lock on during combat, and a host of new photo mode features. You will also now be able to hide your quiver during gameplay. Ghost of Tsushima Legends, the multiplayer expansion for the title, will also receive an update with new content, including a new mode. More t- more details on that will come in the following weeks. This is all incredibly exciting and will be free to all players. However, those looking for a more meaningful upgrade will want to p- pay attention to the Director's Cut, which comes with PS5 features, upgrades, and more. So, very vague on that, you know, Numo Photomo, and they kind of touched on this in the, the Director's Cut reveal, but it's nice to know that we don't have to wait till the Director's yeah. Cut launches to get these features. Um, I'm intrigued to see what the new Legends mode will be. Hopefully we find out, you know, maybe next week. Um, because if they say it's soon, that means it's probably before the month ends. So I'm hoping in the next week or so they Yeah, they I still need to play the Legends mode. Like, I feel like once I'm finally done with the story, um, we need to get me, you, Murdoch, and Brandon on it so we can go through all of the legends mode and enjoy it and everything. So I, but I am glad that it is a free right. update that they're adding more to it and that they're not just like put out legends and then that's it. That they're going to add more to it because I know a lot right. of people really like legends. So the more content that comes to that, the better, like they're wanting games that can live longer. That's how you do it. You get, you put it out and, not just single player story, but stuff that people can play together with their friends. Yep. Today was a state of play. So we've got some state of play news that we're going to cover uh, with some trailers and everything. So we're going to watch some of those. Uh, First up is new lost judgment gameplay premieres will give free next gen upgrades to those who purchase last gen's versions. So let's take a gander at this, uh, this lost judgment. I don't know literally anything about it, uh, but it is. Well, it's, it's a sequel to the judgment okay. game from a couple uh, of years It ago. is rated M. So hide your babies, hide your, all those. <laughs> your honor. Hide your, hide your eyes. In a warehouse about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. Oh, maybe you hadn't heard that. Graphics look great. Yeah. You mean it's revenge? Yeah, this is like from the same people who do the Yakuza games. This is like gonna take over their Yakuza style as um like a dragon does okay. more of like their new like turn based style game. Murder is too suspicious. I was really impressed. <laughs> Get him, Yagami bot. Take a nap. This race is mine. Yeah, as you can see here, it still entertains like the wackiness yeah. of the Yakuza mini games. Wow. 
how's that dog like growling like a tiger? <laughs> You're not supposed to think about that. They said to tell you, this is your final warning. They've been spying on me? I guess we couldn't ask for a better piece of bait. What the hell do you think you're doing? This has nothing to do with her. Stop! Kalana! Okay, um, Demon Shiba Inu. Don't know what that means, Dan. Do you know what that means? <laughs> um, Not a thing. Like the cutscene, the dog. Oh, okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, there's like a demon in him. That makes species of the dog. Okay, um, so. Like the game looks really good in the cutscenes, and then it looks like super yeah. like it looks like Yakuza, like n no doubt about it. And like I've never, yeah, exactly. I've never you been can, a Yakuza fan, tell. so like it's it's it is what it is. Um, like if you're into those games, more power to you, you know. Um, but yeah, New Lost yeah. Judgment comes out. Uh, September 24th, 2021, guys, on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. So if uh, you're into it, get it. Yep. Get on it, doggone it. Our second bit of State of Play yep. news. Uh, <laughs> let's check our chat. Uh, Murdoch says, I own one of those games. Couldn't get into it. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Moving on, though, Moss Book 2 has been announced. I was surprised to see this on the docket because I haven't heard anything about Moss in so long. Because <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it was a VR-only game, and while it will be on console, it said it will also this uh, Book 2 will also come okay. to PSVR awesome. as well as console. So let's check this out. We're going to watch a trailer of Moss Book 2. <laughs> There are those who look into the eyes of another and see. I thought that was going to be the eye of Sauron. A soul to corrupt and twist. Skulls, I haven't seen any of these trailers yet, so this Same. is me watching it for the first time. And there are those who see potential. The light within the soul. A chance to lift someone up to achieve the impossible their stories rise to legend <laughs> so tell me what do you see in quill because her story depends it's a studio ghibli right like spirited away? Question mark. Like Moss always looked really cute and cool, but not having a PSVR, it's not something that yeah. I ever got to play. Right. It's a hawk. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I'm glad that they're not giving up on this. I don't know how well the last one was like received or, you know, looked at and everything. But, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm always down for, you know, more cute little, cute little animals and everything. You know? Yep. So 
it, it, it they need PlayStation. One good thing, like Nintendo, they have a diverse platform yep. for something. For Moving everybody. on to the next announcement for the state of play today, Arca- Arcadian, Ar- Arcageddon, Arcadi. Arcade Geddon. Yeah, Arcade PS5 Geddon. gameplay was revealed out now in early access. So let's take a look at this game that I cannot pronounce its name. Arcade Geddon. Um, one interesting one interesting thing before you play the trailer. This is done by Ilphonic, who did the Friday the 13th game oh, and okay. Predator Hunting Grounds. Okay. Oh. Very colorful. You're right. Kind of gives me like the character design kind of gives me like a Osmosis Jones vibe. Yeah, that was, I was trying to think of something and Osmosis Jones is actually the best comparison. So is this like a Fortnite against the world with mini games? Uh, like something. it's kind of like all over the place. Well, in the name like Arcade Geddon, yeah. kind of, you know, possibly. It looks interesting. Oh my, look at that loot. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> like it has the potential of has like the potential of like being something interesting because it's not locked into one particular thing. The only thing that I can think of would be if it does all the things well. You know what I mean? Right. Like it can't just be, it can't just halfway do anything. It needs to have all the parts come together to make it. You yeah, know, a, like a when all of that game. loot was dropping, it reminded me of um, it reminded me of Borderlands, Fortnite. like the amount of loot that was dropping and everything. Oh yeah, um, yeah. It looks interesting. Like after Knockout City, like I feel like I can't say anything yeah. bad about like something like this before I try it, because uh, like right. I remember Knockout City when we were watching a few of the things during. Um, it was early in the year. I was like, why do they keep showing this thing? It looks so dumb. And then we started playing it. It was like, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> no, I say they, they, yeah. they, so I, I'm curious. Here. Like, there is a lot of customization. So I feel like there is going to be uh, some microtransactions in it, uh, which I'm never a huge thing on it. But um, early access, you know, maybe right. we'll, uh, we'll try it. Maybe we'll see uh, what arcade. Arcade Geddon is like. Arcade so Geddon. let us know what y'all think. Uh, Murdoch is like Splatoon. It had probably some some Splatoonish ness right. <laughs> to it. Yeah. So uh, moving on, guys. Let us know what you thought about Arcade Geddon. Uh, but our next game that was announced uh is Sifu is now set for early 2022 release. And is this the one where you get older at every time you die? Yes. Yes. This is that same one. It was supposed to be out later this year, but they had to push it back till early next year. Um, just a quick thing I want to hit in the article here. While the extra weight is painful, the new Fight Club trailer, which has been released for the game, sort of makes up for it. Speaking about the delay, delay the official Sifu Twitter account stressed that the delay was needed in order to provide the game with some much needed polish. Um, they're very sorry for the delay and they thank us for our patience. Um, but depicting our protagonist the, his, in the latest trailer, we shows him getting his butt kicked when he's in his younger years. But as he gets older and older, he becomes more proficient and soon begins laying a terrifying bone crunching beat down mm. on his enemies. Let's watch it. So let's watch this thing. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm curious to see how old you can get. Right, because I mean, after a while, yeah. you know, it's going to run its course. He aging up. Yep. Dang. He getting on up there. Dan said Master Rossi's age and skill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do like how they did like the year change and everything that was 2021, but like it's rolling over to yeah. 2022. Um, you know, we say it every time yep. I'd rather have a game that is delayed. That is good than a game that is rushed and that is bad. Yep. This one is really interesting to me. Um, it doesn't look like there's a ton of gore and everything, um, but I am really yeah. interested to see how the game works like how old can you get like do you automatically gain skills or right. you know it seems like it's like a rogue like where at you know you're you're getting older but yeah. you you understand your opponent better um so you know I, i'm yeah. i like that game i like it looks really cool and then Dan points out is like, although if you get too mm -hmm. old, your skills might deteriorate, which that'd yeah. be an interesting thing. Making the game like the the end game a lot harder for you. But yeah, like I right. I'm I'm really excited about that. Like every time I, I forget I forget about it and then when it gets brought back up, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's that game. Like yeah. it's a very, very cool concept. <laughs> Next up is F-I-S-T or Fist Forged in the Shadow Torch and has a release date that has been confirmed. Um, Murdoch, y'all haven't apparently watched enough Chinese fighting movies. The older guy is where the fighting skills really show off. And no, I agree. I agree. Like That's where, where it always is, is like the yeah. older, older cats that can whip everybody's butts. <laughs> Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Just saying. All right, let's check out Fist yep. State of Trade, a State of Play trailer. This is going to be on the PS5 and the PS4. Port cities as good as lost. Must you go back? <laughs> I thought this was Zoo, uh, Zootopia. Yeah. <laughs> Zootopia. Yeah. <laughs> Zootopia, yeah. dark side of the moon. Okay, was not expecting a side platformer, side scroller. Huh. Yeah, Number like seven. it being rated, I think it's rated like E. Like it being rated E, I thought it was going to be like yeah, e a 10. kid, like a very kiddy kind of game and everything. Like it nope. looks <laughs> interesting. I'm not a side scroller gamer by any means. Anytime I play them, yeah. it's it's kind of like a slog fest for me. Um but that did look really cool. Uh, Murdoch is like mechs, Zootopia combined with Final Fantasy, and Power Armor. Yeah, that that's kind of the <laughs> the overall look of it. You know, um, I don't know. What do you think, Derek? 
Yeah, no, I mean, for a side scroller, it looks intriguing. Like, I wonder if you could do something like, like, give it more power or like give it more upgrades with your uh, armor your or fist. your mech, up, your armor upgrades or your armor enhancements. So yeah, fist. So hopefully, hopefully they can uh, let you be a little bit more creative with it. But yeah, we'll find out yeah. in a few months. Yeah, let us know. Are you going to get fist forged in shadow torch? Uh, Murdoch, are side uh, scrollers any good anymore? There are some good ones um, out there. It's just, you know, kind of depends on where you go for. Um, our next game up is Jet the Far Shore had a game player, gameplay trailer unleashed. Uh, let's take a check check on that. All these games, I don't know what's going on, so we're, we're kind of experiencing these for the first time our, ourselves, guys. This one was shown off on um, like some of these have been shown off in earlier things uh, from last year, but Jet I know was shown off when the PS5 showcase first happened uh, back mm. in June. Of I'm last sure year. when I see it, I'll remember it. Yeah, it had that weird trailer where like we didn't know what was going on gameplay wise. Oh, like, okay, right, cool. I remember now. This is Jet yep. the Far Shore, created by Super Brothers and Pine Scented with a score by Scientific. Pine said, power <laughs> pine saw, baby. One of a, u- a unit of aviator scientists who embark on an interstellar trip and alight on a mythic ocean planet where they dream of securing a future for their species. We aspire yeah, that's what I was thinking. Serpent. Should I be concerned? Feelings of <laughs> awe when we look up at the starry sky. Jet is all about motion, whether it's weaving through trees or jumping over obstacles. I love that sense of speeding through a remarkable natural space under a grand sky and suddenly being in someone's helmet, boots on the ground. Jet's purpose Hmm. involves exploration and discovery. However, our design doesn't rely on combat or resource extraction and the characters go to some lengths to tread lightly, giving indigenous wildlife a wide berth, striving to adapt and avoid conflict. As a jet scout, you'll inspect living things and employ your jet's tools to figure out what makes them tick. Occasion? No killing? And you'll have to use everything at your disposal to emerge unscathed. Over the years, we've contemplated what might be on the minds of interstellar explorers, what might propel them, and what might haunt them. And so our story provides an occasional glimpse into May's dreams, memories, and visions. At heart, Jet is a laid-back and enjoyable exploratory action adventure set within an intriguing new science fiction cosmos. Jet has had a long road. For a few years, there were only three of us. Since then, this vision has been sharpened and bolstered by an all-star squad. We hope you'll embark with us. Um... That was di- way different than what I was expecting, honestly. That that, that was a little bit more yeah, I was than not I was expecting the darkness to it. Um, I, I kind of <laughs> agree with Dan and uh, Murdoch here. A weird No Man's Sky uh, doesn't look like my cup of tea. Um, me and Dan are passing on this one. Like, I, it looks interesting. It it's not my kind of gameplay at all. Like, um. It, it's yeah. it's like a mix of No Man's Sky and Journey. That That's what I'm kind of feeling on it. Uh, it does look yeah. intriguing, but it's not something that I would uh, go out and play myself. Um, you know, but hey, if right. that's the kind of game you're into, then more power to you. So be it. <sighs> Moving on, guys. Demon Slayer, Kimusuto, Nanyabi, the home... <laughs> 
Well, let me. Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, the Hinokami Chronicles gameplay trailer shown from Cyber Connect 2, the makers behind the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games. Well, you don't want me to read it? You don't want me to read it, Derek? <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you're gonna try to recreate what you try to pronounce it as. I'm scared. It's okay. I'm with you. I'll keep you safe. The demon scent is growing stronger. <laughs> I can smell its musk. I don't care who! Just come and fight me! Whoever shows up will be my next prey! I'm a demon slayer! Rank Mizunoto! Tanjiro Kamado! Here I come! And he's wielding Nichirin swords! Is he with the Demon Slayer Corps? Zenitsu? One of my favorite characters from the show, actually. The guy on the boar head. And my least favorite character <laughs> from the show. Thunder breathing. First form. Thunderclap and flash. It's gonna feel so good to rip such a huge target to shreds! Oh. <laughs> Let's go. I'm not giving up. That's a way to get ahead in the game. Stay sharp. Give it everything yeah. got. <laughs> you can do it! I'll get my hands on that rare blood and reclaim my rightful place among the 12 Kizuki. Yes, I've got him now. All right, Derek, you're, you're the one that wa watches yeah. The Demon Slayer. I, I'm I'm I don't know anything about it. Um I can I can try again to say the name yeah, if you so... want. No, please don't. <laughs> Once is enough. Um <laughs> but no, like you can definitely see some elements mm -hmm. from yeah. the Ultimate Ninja Storm games in this, but and I know people were kind of giving it crap uh earlier today from the state of play, but watching it for myself, I'm like I kind of see where they're going on to like the gameplay wasn't that impressive. And like some of the voice lines were like kind of lackluster than they were in the show. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, Murdoch says you've seen the anime. I, uh, he hasn't seen it. Excuse me. Um, I watched it. Um, it doesn't look like it lives up to the anime. I agree with you, Dan. It doesn't. The anime is good. Like I'm not infatuated with it. Like everyone else was like the movie was fantastic, but at least, like, from the end of season one into the movie, I at least see the potential of what the show can be. So if it just builds off of what the movie did, because um, it's actually an arc from the anime. It's not, like, just a one-off. Um, the show will get even better. So, but I like it. But I do agree with Dan. Like, from what the anime did is, like, the game does not in uh, repeat that. Well, something that is repeated over and over and over is our next game that has a nine minute trailer that we're not going to watch guys. <laughs> uh, there, no, for several reasons. One, because it's nine minutes, almost 10 minutes. And two, because it's got some adult stuff. And the last trailer we watched of death loop, um, <laughs> had some language. So we're yeah. going to spare your ears this time around. Y'all can go check it out on the Sony. Moving YouTube on channel. though to our last, last part of the state of play, Death Stranding's director's cut new trailer sets a release date. So we're gonna take a gander at it. So this is rated M for mature. So hide your kids, hide your wives. Yep. <laughs> Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave ri rise Sorry, to life as we know it. Then, 
came the next explosion. An explosion that will be our last. Sam, I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Rebuilding America isn't gonna get rid of the BTs. But at least we'll have hope. I'm a porter. I don't care about connecting anything. Too bad. No, it's okay. You see, I've come to understand the truth of the Death Stranding. Hmm. I'm Troy Baker. That's, oh, upgraded melee? Okay. Macer gun? Interesting. Oh, an electro shotgun. That's cool. Mounted machine guns. All right. Firing range. Ooh, for practicing. I like that. <laughs> cargo delivery. catapult. Free support. For oh, cargo catapult. That's interesting. <laughs> Buddy bot. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Give me something. Jump ramp. Fragile circuit. Okay. Oh, really? Interesting. New story mission? Ooh, no story missions. That's what I want to hear. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. All right. December 24th. So the that's soon. I'll I'll I'm pull this uh just a second. Um just get chat real quick. Um Murdoch said I'll play this one day, getting some heavy duty equipment, says Dan. Do this is some good stuff. And Murdoch says I'll wait for a PC drop. Is it an already on PC? Yeah, it's already on PC. Yeah, so uh, you can already out, uh, check year. it out on PC. Now, well, I, I wonder. Well, I wonder if he means the director's cut will drop on PC, which I don't yeah. know if they're going to drop that immediately on PC or not. So I know just the yeah, just the base yeah, version is so on PC now. Th that was my my other thing is like the PS5 is getting the director's cut. Do you think that we will see the director's cut come to PS4 and the PC, or will it be just a PS5 exclusive? Um, well, let me see here, because um, cause there's an article that discusses that. It's like, Death Stranding players who currently own the console on PS4 are in luck, as the news that you can get the soon-to-be-released Death Stranding Director's Cut Digital Deluxe Edition on PS5 at a discounted price. The news came from the new store page of, for the game and was pointed out by Twitter user Wario64. The Digital Deluxe Edition will include, among other things, new in-game suits, new gamer game power glove colors, additional BB Pod customization options, and a set of avatars in a digital mini art book and mini soundtrack PS5 app. Um, thankfully, that discounted price is quite discounted since the upgrade will only cost $10, as was pointed out by Wario64. This is similar to the other director's cut we know to be releasing soon for Ghost of Tsushima, though the upgrade will see players spending $30 rather than just $10. Um, so it doesn't say it's coming to PS4, which is interesting because the director's cut for Tsushima is on both, but it's not saying that for Death Stranding. Maybe when we get closer, maybe they'll say it's for PS4 as well, but I guess it's a wait and yeah, see. Yeah. Um, mm, excuse me, guys. Hopefully it'll come to both because, like, if I ever do get around to playing it, I would like to play the director's cut because there are missions. There's, you know, multiple things that are being added to it. So it's not just a up res or, you know, version of it. It is actually way more to it. So uh, glad to see that they're putting out a director's version. Right. There is more to the game. Uh, I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. You know, Kojima still don't understand majority of his games. 
That's just, yeah, that's exactly. just it. And our last bit of big discussion news this week, Sony indicates that it has more PS5 and PlayStation 4 updates to come this summer. Yep. Uh, after hosting their state of play, uh, it seems that PlayStation console maker isn't stopping there. As it is indicated, it has more up its sleeves for later this summer. That's at least according to Sid Schumann on the PlayStation blog, who, while not outlining any specific plans for PS5 and PS4 owners, did suggest there's more in the pipeline. Another state of play later this summer, perhaps? We can only hope so. Quote, stay tuned throughout the summer as we'll have more updates soon. And that's your and that's your lot, sadly. Yes, it's not much to go on, but it's tantalizing teaser nonetheless. Well, there you go. We might get something. So. Yep. More to Stick come. Stick tuned. You'll know. So. You'll know. Just listen to the Nerd Cave News. We'll take we'll take care of you, especially exactly. if it's Sony news. <laughs> exactly, Derek. Oh, yeah, let's 100%. move into the quick hits of this week. Yep. So to kick off, we got some Destiny Two stuff. Uh, Destiny Two's Solstice of Heroes returns now and will be running through August third. Destiny Two. Following that, they have confirmed a showcase for Destiny Two uh, for August twenty fourth. Um, Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser reportedly launches new game studio. NBA 2K22 release date leaks for September 10th with Kevin Durant, Dirk Nowitzki, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the cover athletes. Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3 Pixel remasters launch on July 29th. Xbox and Nike team up for exclusive new Space Jam shoes and companion controller launching on July 15th. The Witcher, the Witcher Monster Slayer mobile game launches on iOS and Android July 21st. The Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me, trademark by Supermassive. They always kind of do this right before um, or right after their next game in the anthology launches, which is this is probably going to be their next one after House of Ashes, <laughs> Ashes drops. <laughs> Call of Duty Slipstream could be the name of, the, of this year's game. Um... Final Fantasy Remake Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2 will likely include features from Remake's Integrate <laughs> Intermission Chapter. Uh, the rumor going around is Pro Evolution Soccer 2022, which is Konami's soccer game, reportedly will be going free to play. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla PC users can now use the DualSense controller. What? What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, uh, the, continuing on until the dark, gets, the, until what, was the dark pictures house of what? what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> house of ashes. I'm, I I caught myself after when you started laughing. I'm like, I caught myself. I didn't say it. Um, <laughs> oh. um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla PC users can now use the DualSense controller. EA shoots down chatter about in-game TV-style advertisers, which is a good thing. Uh, Genshin Impact cross-save functionality possibly coming in next update for PS5 and PS4. (laughs) (laughs) Stop it, it's contagious. Um, Okay. Uh, Atari Gaming is ditching the free-to-play and mobile strategy to focus on premium games for all consoles. Fall Guys Season 5 costumes leak will include Ratchet and Clank, Astrobot, Spelunky, and Kena Bridge of Spirits. A Plague Tale Innocence to get a physical release for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S on October 19th. Red Dead Redemption 2, Neo 2, God of War 2018, and Judgment join PlayStation Now's lineup for July. Blair Witch VR coming to Oculus and PSVR later this summer. RoboCop Rogue City announced for 2023 from the developers behind Terminator Resistance, which launched uh, January of last year. Mortal Kombat 11 support ends as NetherRealm moves on to next project. GTA 6 will reportedly have an evolving map, will return to Vice City, and reportedly launch in 2025. Doom Eternal is dropping planned invasion mode in favor of single-player horde mode. Um, EA's DICE LA studio renamed Ripple Effect and will be led by head of Respawn, Vince Zampella. Red Dead Online's Blood Money update confirmed for July 13th. Fallout 76's Steel Rain update is out now and wraps up the Brotherhood of Steel storyline. And lastly, Resident Evil Village sales top four and a half million worldwide. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm trying to hold it together, but I just keep playing it in my head. And I'm like, what kind of game is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I know, so but it was like it, it, it caught me off guard, and then I started thinking about it, and then like I'm so tired right now. <laughs> and I just saying like, I'm sorry, like, my mouth like, just failed me. <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. Oh. Oh man! Oh. Yeah, the, yeah, ashes. that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, guys, we hope that you enjoyed this episode of Nerd Game News. Your one-stop shop for all the video game news that you need to know. I've been Zach, one of your humble hosts. Joined along with <laughs> with Derek, he, he's part of the the house of ashes. <laughs> uh, it is family friendly. It was just funny. It was just hilarious. Really? It was hilarious, <laughs> guys. We hope that you enjoyed this show. We will be back next Monday for some more awesome nerdy goodness. We will see you next time. Peace out. A town down. Adios, amigos. Muchachos. Bye.